Okay, in this video, I'm going to continue on with my tutorials on vector calculus for electromagnetism. As it stands, this will be my final video. This is video number 41, and I'm going to discuss the second part on the Dirac Delta Function. I'd like to draw your attention to my website, universityphysicstutorials.com, and also if you'd like updates and my videos and news and so on, you can follow me on Twitter at adambt503. So there are a number of videos which are previous to this and are relevant. Number 41, I discussed the Dirac Delta Function Part 1. So I introduced it, I'm going to build upon it here, in, specifically for electromagnetism. In my videos in quantum statistics, I discussed spherical polar coordinates on video number 43. And in my videos for, uh, we'll say, vector calculus for electromagnetism, we know I also discussed the divergence theorem. I just can't remember the, uh, the number, that's all. So I'd like to build on the, uh, what we saw in the last video in regard to the delta function. So just to remind us, the delta function is as follows. We define delta of x is equal to 0 or infinity, depending on the following. If it's x not equal to uh, 0 or x is equal to 0. So it only exists at the origin. Okay, So we'll say that's, it will look something like this. This is x is equal to 0, except this will go the whole way up to infinity, like that at, at, the, at the origin. But it has this... It has a sifting property as well. Just to remind us, even though it's actually not necessary for this particular video, it is a sifting property that it can pick out the value of a function. So if you multiply any function, say f of x, by your delta x minus a, sorry, by delta x, we'll say to start off with, what it's, what's going to happen is it will pick out the value of your function. And the way it does that is as follows. It's just it, because um, f of x will only, we'll say, sorry, the delta function will only be non-zero at the origin, well then this is going to pick out the value of f at zero. Then we have our sifting property where if we if we shift the uh, the delta function, we'll say f of x at delta x minus a, we get back f at a. Okay, or we could put we could put the shift actually on, on f if we want. Okay. Okay, and we get that back there. All right, so that that's just a bit of revision. So now I'd like to move on, and uh, uh, yeah, I'd like to I'd like to move on. So from our videos on uh, spherical polar coordinates, we found the following: we found that the the Laplacian in rectangular coordinates can be written as del del x in the i hat direction plus del del y in the j hat direction plus del del z in the k hat direction. But we can transform it into spherical co polar coordinates and it looks like the following. You have 1 over r squared, del del r, and we have, and we have, r, we have r squared, r hat. We have 1 over r times sine of theta. And we have theta hat. And we have to add on to that 1 over r sine theta, r sine theta, um, del del phi phi hat. Okay, now I never actually proved that myself. I'm sure you can look it up. It's not really a big deal. And in spherical polar coordinates, the infinitesimal area element is going to be r squared sine of theta d phi d theta. Okay, nothing new to us there. Now here comes the interesting part. Let us make a new function, call it capital A, a vector, a vector function, and it's going to be r hat divided by r squared. And what I want to do is calculate the divergence of this particular vector field. So if we look at this, it's not as simple as you think because we have the divergence of a is going to be equal to 1 over r squared del del r r squared, excuse me, that's r squared r hat dot dot r hat over r squared. And if you look at all that, it's going to be 1 over r squared del del r of r squared over r squared. And if you put it all together, you're going to get 0. Okay, because d dr of 1 is, is 0, of course. So the divergence of this particular vector field is 0. Now, you'll see, where, you'll see why in a moment, but I'm going to look now at the closed surface integral of capital A, the vector field, dot the infinitesimal area element, a dot dA. 
You'll see why in a moment. I'm sure you actually can copy it. We're going for the divergence theorem. But anyway, so this is simply going to be the, the integral of 1 over r squared r hat. And uh, we're going to have to dot that with r squared sine theta d phi d theta. Okay, so phi goes between 0 and 2 pi, theta goes between 0 and pi, and it's going to, sorry, there's no hat there, of course. I'm going to tell you the answer is 4 pi. It's just two, two lines of, of text, and you have the answer. So it's 4 pi. So this is a strange thing. And the reason is as follows. The divergence theorem has the following uh, form. It says that the volume integral, if you integrate over the volume of the divergence of your, your, your vector field A, it's an integrate d tau, of course. It, it should be equal to the closed surface integral of my vector field dot dA. But what we see here is that we'll say the, we'll say the divergence of A is 0. So this whole thing must be 0, it, it says, over the volume. Yet here is non-zero. This is equal to 4 pi. So what it seems to be saying is 4 pi is equal to 0, surely. Now, I, I'm, I'm sure you can see the, the problem is that it's invalid at the origin because we're dividing by 1 over r squared. So the point here is it's invalid at the origin for every singularity. Anyway, it seems like we violated the, the, uh, the divergence theorem. But actually what we found is a new function, the direct delta function. The surface integral here, okay, is, is independent of r, as we saw it, because we have r squared on the bottom and r squared on the top. So it's independent of r. So we can choose any radius. Now what that means is that all of this 4 pi contribution comes from the, or, uh, from the origin, so where r is equal to 0, where we have a singularity because we're dividing by 0. So the point is here, we're getting a function who is 0 everywhere, uh, uh, everywhere except at the origin, and its value at the origin is, of course, 4 pi. So, do we know anything that has similar properties? In other words, its value is zero everywhere, and yet if you integrate it across all space, you'll find that it's got a finite, finite value. All right, and the answer is yes, of course you do. Let's just very quickly look at mass density. If you have mass density, okay, well the, the mass density of a point charge, we'll say, or actually let's say charge density, because we're going to be doing, uh, we're going to be doing electro, electro, electrostatics next. So the density, we'll say, is zero for a charge at, at the, for a point charge at the origin unless you're at the origin so if you're not at zero it's if you're not at the origin the, char the charge density is equal to zero but of course if you integrate the charge density across all space you're going to get a finite number and what you're going to get you're going to get the charge all right so we're, we're finding here a function which is zero unless you're at the origin yet it integrates to a finite number now bring in, we'll say, our bring in what we know so far. We know that the delta function, that's in one, that de delta of x is in one dimension. But in three dimensions, I'm going to call it d3r like this. It's a vector, and it's going to be that delta in the x dimension, delta in the y dimension, and delta in the z dimension, where r as normal is, we'll say, it's uh, x i hat plus y j hat plus z k hat. All right? Next, um, this function is zero everywhere except at x is equal to zero where it's infinite. But of course, as per normal, we find that the integral across all space of d3r is equal to one. In other words, it is a finite number. If we employ the if we employ excuse me the sifting property, we find that f of r multiplied by d3r minus a like this is simply going to give us back f at a or we could rewrite it f of r minus a d3 a is it going to, going to give us f at a all right now how do we use this to resolve our previous problem what we see is as follows that we had the when we talked about that divergence let's we'll say the divergence of r hat over r squared it was zero everywhere except the origin so the only way we can we can resolve this is by having okay the origin value is 4 pi but we need to multiply by the three-dimensional direct delta function 
And just to point out, I'm not going to. I'm going to show this. I'm going to sorry state this with a proof that if you take the divergence, uh, or excuse me, if you don't, if you take sorry the, the Laplacian squared, or the, the, the excuse me the Laplacian of one over r, it's minus four pi d three d three r like that. Okay, I'm going to state that with a proof. We'll actually need that at some point. So. That's all I've got to say about that. I hope that was useful. Thanks for watching. Please pass it on to your friends. Subscribe to my channel. And you might also visit universityphysicstorials.com.